Hey guys and welcome to another video. So right now it is 1.50 a.m. in the morning and battery day has just ended and I wanted to give you guys a recap of the most important stuff so you guys get like a condensed version of what has actually been said. If you want to see the full version I'll copy the link to the uh, Tesla video the entire presentation in the description below this video but uh, let's dive into it. Let me start backwards a little bit because everybody was waiting on Plaid Model S uh, of course and I was kind of underwhelmed in the sense that it got like one minute of attention and that was it. They just announced that the Plaid Model S would have over 1100 horsepower, would go 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds, would do 200 miles an hour and uh, uh, the quarter mile in less than nine seconds. So basically those are for the most part the 2017 Roadster specifications. And that makes me question of course, what will the Roadster be capable of? If this is for the Model S and the Roadster will be the real hypercar, well, that uh, is something to look forward to. Unfortunately, we didn't get any information and nobody in the uh, audience that was asking questions I uh, was asking about the Roadster at all. Elon didn't mention the Roadster at all in any of his presentation slides or during the presentation itself. So makes me wonder if the Roadster gets postponed a little bit more. But uh, that Plaid Model S, that will arrive just in time for my lease to end and then I can step up to that version. That would be a nice addition because I started out with the P85D went from insane to ludicrous with the P100D and now we would move on to Plaid mode of course. Now besides that Elon also mentioned that they are going to build indeed a cheaper car, a $25,000 car, uh, but that would be in about three years. Uh, it would also be with the new batteries because the new batteries are going to have a huge cost reduction. I'll come back to that in just a minute. But uh, it's not for any time soon. Uh, he didn't mention whether that would be Model 2 or anything. There was no unveil, no real shaping of that specific car that could be seen. Um, but yeah, it is coming and it probably won't be 25,000. Uh, it will be more like 30, 35,000 I guess. Just like with the Model 3, you will be able to get the base, 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 base version. Uh, at 25,000 but nobody's going to actually buy that one um, because you at least have one option that you will tick the box on. Now when Elon came on stage at first for the shareholder meeting you could see he was really proud of what they have achieved. He gave an overview of what they have achieved over the past years and, and also over the past year and he was very proud of how fluent and how smoothly the Model Y ramp up actually went and he's also saying that the Gigafactories are being built faster and faster so Berlin will be faster than Shanghai which also goes into a second phase and then uh, Giga Texas will be even faster than Berlin. He also mentioned that Giga Berlin will actually start producing battery cells as well so that makes uh, for some really good news because that would mean that in Europe we will have a big part of the vertical integration as well so you will have battery production, vehicle assembly, uh, parts production, all that in that uh, Gigafactory and that reduces the cost. The question is of course how much of that cost will Elon transfer to the customers and how much will he use to further expand the company um, but I think that Model Y and Model 3 are definitely going to be cheaper in Europe because at least we won't have the import costs anymore and the shipping costs of course. Now he also pointed out that for us who are not involved in the rewrite of Autopilot it is very hard to just progress on that um, but he's been driving the Alpha build uh, daily now and he says it's going to be uh, quite amazing and a big difference. Uh, I guess we'll have to see whenever we will get that rewrite downloaded to us. But the fact is that I mentioned already in, uh, in the videos 
that all eight cameras are being combined into a single 360 view and that image, that video is then 3D labeled also actually more like 4D labeled because he adds some uh, time difference as well like what changes from one frame to the other of course to detect moving parts and the speed of those moving parts naturally um, so yeah I can't wait to get that because that would definitely eliminate some of the issues that we are all experiencing at the moment now after a brief pause after the shareholder meeting a battery day event was actually kicked off and as soon as Elon um, was joined on stage by the VP of uh, Powertrain and Energy uh, we got a short introduction but then it became quite quickly clear that the whole presentation was basically focusing around reducing the environmental footprint localizing production, reducing lead times, uh, reducing the costs and increasing production of course and combining all of these is a very daunting task uh, and they explained in uh, rather great detail what they are planning to do with the actual batteries now I'll try to compose the headlines here if you want to see the details please look at the video uh, from the Tesla presentation but uh, let me give you the highlights of what exactly they are planning to do in the different steps now their big master plan here is that they want to reduce the cost, they want to halve the cost of um, the battery pack per kilowatt hour. Some say they are already approaching the $100 mark and if they could halve that, that would be, that would be totally end game for uh, any ICE car. Um, but anyway, they're, they're definitely going to drop way below $100 per kilowatt hour if they can actually execute this plan. Now it's a um, four or five step uh, plan here where they will change the cell design. So the new cells are going to be uh, a 4680, so 46 millimeters in diameter, 80 millimeters tall. Now this new form factor alone is responsible for adding 16% range to the car. Now this is of course not because of the form factor by itself but the fact that that form factor uh, makes that you have less material to work with uh, bigger cells means less aluminum on the outside uh, less wasted space between the cells uh, and so on and so on so that will introduce more capacity um, and that will also reduce the cost per kilowatt hour by 14% now the second part is in manufacturing and there they want to reduce as many steps as possible, keep it as simple as possible um, and uh, work with uh, dry anodes also for example uh, but we'll come back to that later but with the dry anodes the uh, process of creating that film that is then rolled up into that new uh, 4680 cell uh, is going to be simplified by quite a bit uh, reducing cost reducing lead time increasing capacity and increasing volume of course if the lead time is reduced as long as they can get the parts sourced um, now this manufacturing step if you want to look at the details again go to the uh, actual uh, presentation to get all the nitty-gritty details but this manufacturing uh, change would save 18% on uh, or on the dollar per kilowatt hour on the pack. So we're not talking about cell level, we're talking at, about pack level. Now they also talked about the silicon anode. So right now there is a little bit of silicon in uh, the 2170 cells. But the problem with silicon is that it expands uh, too much when it's under load. So that's really not good. So they designed the new cell to allow for that expansion also. And that alone will also uh, increase uh, or bring with it a 5% uh, cost reduction on the dollar per kilowatt hour on pack level. Um, next they want to uh, create a completely cobalt free but high nickel 
uh, battery. That would of course be really good because cobalt is uh, some nasty stuff. It is really stable to be used but the way it is mined there's a lot of child abuse in that and uh, a lot of horror stories around that so it's good that they want to move away from uh, using cobalt. But they are going to use nickel which is cheaper and more energy dense. Um, but it is a little bit harder to get stable enough. So apparently they found a way to make it stable uh, and, that, and that would also introduce a 15% reduction on the cathode side. So not on the battery pack but on the cathode side uh, only. Um, combine that with lithium uh, that I want to use or they want to get from uh, lithium rich clay using salt and water and apparently uh, the salt comes out with uh, the lithium together with the water and you can just put the clay back and Tesla has a big claim to mine and uh, they intend to just do that get the lithium out put everything back again um, now getting that is uh, a 12 percent cost reduction again at the pack level now if you combine everything uh, that means that they will have a range increase of 54% and a cost reduction of 56%. So that basically matches with something that I've been saying for a few months now, uh, ever since Battery Day was announced, is that I was expecting an actual uh, Model S, a 600 mile Model S, uh, that, uh, and, and the target goal for me for the Roadster now is 1000 miles. Now if you have a current 400 mile Model S, you apply the 54% uh, increase on, on range and subtra subtract maybe a little bit for the tri-motor or for inefficiencies, additional weight. Uh, although I believe that the weight was going to be less because of less filler material in the battery pack itself. Because the battery pack becomes now structural and uh, the cells become structural so they don't need additional structure to house those uh, cells um, but that would be actually a 600 mile car um, with the new battery technology now this battery technology is also something that is not available yet they are aiming for mass production end of next year uh, maybe 18 months from now and uh, full production would be uh, within two years more or less so that was something that kind of underwhelmed me because I was really expecting the Plat Model S to be available uh, well you can order it now but it would be available with the new technology and uh, it would be available uh, basically right away and that is not the case because you can order it, but it's only going to be delivered at the end of 2021 in the US, probably a little bit later in Europe. Oh yeah, and one other important thing of course is that Tesla is apparently already recycling the battery cells from their vehicles, but they want to become more proficient in it. So as soon as they have more vehicles on the road and those vehicles are coming end of life, of course those batteries can be recycled and that is lithium and nickel that does not need to be mined anymore because they can just recycle those components. I mean if a battery goes bad and you get degradation the actual the nickel and the lithium is not degrading at all. You can completely reuse those components. Uh, it's just that in the uh, chemistry there is like a layer buildup on one side that forms a barrier for the electrons to travel through and that is basically your degradation how thick that layer actually is um, so yeah those batteries could basically f be fully reusable because they can reuse the aluminum on the outside they can reuse the lithium they can reuse the nickel that's in there and with the cell design we also have a tablet cell design which means that you have a bigger contact patch within the cell instead of just the small tab that needs to lead every current in there that means that the floodgates are open basically you will get a lot higher charge rates 
and a lot less heat uh, generation during the charging cycles. So potentially, uh, Elon didn't mention it, but my point of view here is, or my opinion here is that potentially we could get like 250 kilowatts of charging or the 350 kilowatts of charging, but for a very long time on the cell, maybe like all the way up to 60-70% before it starts tapering off. And even then, maybe continue on uh, or at 150 kilowatts until 80 uh, or maybe even 90%. We'll see what the characteristics there are, but because there is a bigger contact patch, the load can be distributed a lot easier, which means that uh, it's like basically like using a thicker cable. You get a lot less resistance, so you get a lot less heat in the system. So there you have it. These are the highlights from battery day. Um, I found it really interesting and I would like to go more in depth into what they actually discussed now with regards to the uh, battery design and what it actually will mean practically. Um, so I'll probably re-watch the video a couple of times to get some additional details from the slides uh, because right now I was taking notes the whole time during the presentation of course. Um, on the other hand I was hoping that it would be more imminent and more um, like right now we can do this instead of just uh, saying okay this is going to be working in the next 12 to 18 months they actually mentioned with the dry anode that the system is not working yet so they know what they want to do they have it on the lab scale but now they need to have it in mass production and that system is not working yet and they think they need to redesign the machine uh, like seven or eight times before they get to the mass production uh, stage. But yeah, interesting times ahead of us. Um, I'm really looking forward to what this means for all the different cars. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what that means for the Roadster, for the Semi and for the Cybertruck, of course. As usual, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.